Okay, uh, hello, my name is Amit Power, and this is a video tutorial on how to perform ultrasound guided blocks of the, the ankle. I actually often performed ever so slightly higher than the above the ankle than we, um, than we think, but I'm going to take you through a process. Um, the indications for these blocks are for surgery on the forefoot uh, or the midfoot. You can use it as analgesia or as anesthesia, uh, and it's a great technique, involved blocking five nerves. If you look about uh, how we've got the leg position, you may or may not notice I've got the legs lots of bent almost in a figure of four position, um, and this allows us to access um, the medial part of the of the foot. I've got the left foot uh, visible here, and th think about the nerves in order. You've got the tibial nerve, the saphenous nerve. Uh, if I straighten the leg, you've got the deep perineal, the superficial perineal, and the sural nerve. Uh, all nerves except for the saphenous have derived from the sciatic nerve. So I'm going to start off with a high frequency linear probe. Uh, I'm going to place that um, on the ankle and I've got the screen oriented. Let me see if I can introduce a little pointer to this now. Uh, so here we go. I've got the screen oriented. So here, this is on the right hand side of the screen um, is anterior uh, and the left hand side of the screen is posterior. And on the right hand side of the screen, you can see a very obvious bright white dropout, uh, bright white line with a dropout artifact. That means we're looking at bone. This is the medial uh, malleolus, and this is the tibia. And immediately posterior to the tibia is the tendon of tibialis posterior. So you've got tibia, immediately posterior to the tibia, you've got the tendon of tibialis posterior. And then there's people use this acronym Tom, Dick, and Harry. Dick relates to flexor digitorum longus. Uh, which is this structure over here, and behind here, over here, you've got flexor hallucis longus. Now, if, you, if I increase the pressure, release the pressure, hopefully you'll be aware that you can see some veins compressible. I'll point those veins out here, one vein there, one vein there, and there, where, right where the circle is hovering over, that is the tib posterior tibial artery. Now, I'm cautious to call it the posterior tibial artery because we do have an anterior tibial artery, but the nerve that lies in close proximity to this is not called the posterior tibial nerve, it's simply called the tibial nerve. Now, in the majority of your, uh, of your patients, when you scan, you get this view of the tibia, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, flexor hallucis longus over here, you'll see the artery in two veins, and posterior to the artery, you'll see the tibial nerve. Now, in this model, interestingly, the tibial nerve is lying anterior to the tibial vessels. Now you can see this structure over here, it's, I'm, I'm pointing to it, it's a honeycomb structure. I'm going to drop the depth so we focus our attention on just what we're interested on now. So I'm looking at this area right in front of the tibial artery and then I'm going to scan up the leg and as I scan up the leg I want you to watch what's happening to this structure. This structure is here, it's going to swing round so it lies posterior to the artery. So we're going to keep going up the leg there it is, and you can see it's just starting to move around. Try and make good contact with the skin. So it's got to this point here, where the, the nerve is actually sitting underneath uh, the tibial artery. If I keep going up the leg, it's only at this point, if I remove the marker out of the way, bring the gain down a bit to try and emphasize that, you can hopefully start to appreciate the tibial nerve has moved over here. Just trying to gain up a bit. What I want you to appreciate is that actually where the probe is positioned now is some distance away uh, from, the, uh, from what we would consider, it, consider the ankle. Come down a little bit more and there hopefully you can visualise the tibial nerve fairly clearly demonstrated over here. So one of the reasons why we tend to do the block slightly further away from the ankle is you get a little bit more tissue and you're not going through narrow areas of skin. You've got a little bit more padding of the muscle where the tendons become muscle. You've got a couple of different approaches. You can approach anteriorly, but one of the advantages, if you were to have, if you imagine the other leg lying underneath here, and you had this um, leg positioned in a figure of four, you could actually bring your needle in behind, in plane. Uh, so that needle is coming in from the back. You can see the pressure on the screen. These are also anisotropic nerves. As I change the tilt, uh, you can notice the nerve becomes more and less visible, but hopefully you can appreciate it's a sizable nerve we tend to block it first. It takes the largest volume of local anesthetic, about four to five mils. Uh, it takes the longest to cook, so we tend to block it first. So having finished the tibial nerve, we can then now move a little bit more 
anteriorly. So I'm going to move now across onto uh, the, the medial malleolus itself. I'm going to release the pressure and as if by magic, uh, right on top of the medial malleolus, I'm trying to try and adjust my pressure. You can see that the long saphenous or great saphenous vein. Now, in the majority of cases, it, to block the saphenous nerve, which is the next nerve as we come round, all we need to do is to, is to put local anesthetic around the vein, do a perivenous injection. Sometimes, as you scan a little bit more proximally, you can start to visualize the structure. There may be that there's something sitting over here, but you know what, I'm not a betting man. Uh, if I saw a nice vein over there, which the, um, the marker is over, I'll move that out of the way. All I would aim to do is to put some local anesthetic around that vein in order to take the, the saphenous. And again, I've moved a little bit further away from the ankle. We do a perivenous injection. The more and more I look at it, my eyes being drawn to something over here. Uh, but essentially, all we need to do is do a perivenous injection. So we've then done our tibial nerve with in plane with about four to five mils of local anesthetic. The saphenous uh, nerve around the saphenous vein, potentially with um, with one to two cc's of local anesthetic, really not very much. And now we're going to move across to uh, the anterior aspect of the, the ankle. So the next nerve that we're looking for is a deep perineal. So let me see how I'm going to place my probe. So I'm going to place my probe. It's always a lot more lateral than you realise. So I'm going to place my probe relatively lateral on the ankle. Uh, and I've placed it sort of, I guess, where you consider the ankle joint to be if we move the foot around here. Uh, and if we just relax the foot in a relatively neutral position, um, I'm going to use a relatively large amount of force and hopefully as I'm doing that you can see the dorsalis, uh, or this is actually the anterior tibial artery before it goes down onto the foot to become the dorsalis pedis which you're seeing over here. I'm going to be uh, scanning over the surface of the tibia and we're looking for a very obvious artery. If I release the pressure, you see those common veins lying either side of it. Now the challenge is to work out where you can see the deep perineal nerve. So if I scan up and down, aha, as I'm starting to scan down, hopefully you're starting to appreciate there's a structure right over here. This is the deep perineal nerve. It's right next to the veins. And often, as you scan up and down the leg, you'll see the nerve move over the blood vessels. So let's go up the leg a bit. The nerve is lying on the right-hand side of the screen. The right-hand side of the screen is lateral. And as I'm going up the leg, it's not gonna move. There you go. Uh, but certainly you can see this nerve-like structure as I'm going down, but it's still staying relatively close to the vessels. But you've got the nerve line right over here. So again, ideally you would visualize this nerve. If you don't visualize the nerve, just putting a couple of mils of local anesthetic around it would be all that you need to do. Um, but the nice thing is use a bit of pressure, uh, identify the deep perineal nerve, uh, and you only need, the needle here is coming from the right-hand side of the screen, or the medial, so you get, don't give yourself too much distance to traverse, but you need a couple of mils of local anesthetic. It's really important you try to visualize that nerve. So that's tibial, saphenous, deep perineal. The next nerve we're gonna block is the superficial perineal. Um, I've very kindly got our model to turn um, his leg slightly, uh, slightly to the, so I can access the lateral aspect. I'm gonna switch hands here so you can demonstrate. I'm going to place the probe over the lateral aspect um, of the leg and we're aiming to look for the superficial perineal nerve. When you place the probe on the lateral aspect of the, of the, um, of the bed, or sorry, when you place the probe on the lateral aspect of the leg, um, the first bone you'll identify will of course be the fibula, it's the lateral malleolus. Uh, I've got it oriented so that the left hand side of the screen is anterior, the right side of the screen is posterior. And I'm going to start to scan up the leg until I see that tibia, uh, sorry, that fibula form essentially like a shark's fin. Now that shark's fin will start to point to the nerve. Uh, so I'm going to come back down. So we started on the lateral aspect. That is the fibula here. And having been on the lateral aspect, I'm going to start to move anteriorly or more, move proximally. And as I move proximally, you'll see a couple of muscle bellies. So you've got extensor digitorum and perineus brevis, extensor digitorum longus and perineus brevis. Uh, the, the, and in the groove between those two muscles, you'll tend to see the superficial perineal nerve. Now, I'm gonna put the hover, the, the circle of where I think it is. So I'm gonna keep scanning 
more proximal. And as I scan more proximal, you'll hopefully start to see that nerve. And there it is, it's starting to dive down between those muscle bellies. I'm gonna come back down again. And as I scan distally, you expect to see that nerve, which is accompanied with a blood vessel. You can just see that blood vessel pulsating away right underneath here. This is a superficial perineum. As I scan distally, it's gonna pop up above this crural fascia. I'm gonna drop the, the gain a little bit here and it's gonna split into small branches. So this is the superficial perineal nerve. It's just about to start splitting here into small branches. There, it's separated into small branches. You can just see it over here. I'm now gonna go back up. And you're gonna see it's gonna sit between extensor digitorum longus and perineus brevis. It's sandwiched between those two muscle bellies over there. I keep going more proximal. And as I go more proximal, I'm gonna change the tilt. Again, these nerves are anisotropic. You go right the way up and you'll see it's going to start to dive down between those two muscle bellies. I'm trying to make contact with the skin the whole time. But there is the superficial perineal nerve. So again, where would I block it? I'd block it coming anteriorly from this side, aiming to, to get local anesthetic just deep to the fascia. Some people will block it as it becomes superficial and crosses the crural fascia. I like to block it in that gap over there. I use an in-plane technique uh, and I would use about one to two cc's of local anesthetic, essentially all you need to do, uh, all you need to surround it. The final nerve we're gonna block is really posterior over here. Uh, and some people will block this nerve with the patient in the lateral position. Um, this is the sural nerve. In order to identify the sural nerve, this, the main uh, landmark we're looking for here is the short saphenous vein. So right in the center of the screen, uh, um, and you can see how posterior I am. I'm right posterior. That's the short saphenous vein. It's compressible. If I, if, I, uh, if I use a lot of pressure, it disappears. If I relax, it comes back. And if I remove the marker, you'll see a structure right next to it. That is the sural nerve, which is lying right next to the short saphenous. I'm going to remove that from the screen. If I scan proximal, you'll see the short saphenous is there. On the left hand side of that, which is anterior, you've got that short, uh, you've got a sural nerve lying right with the short saphenous. Now you'll notice when you're scanning for veins, you can't use too much pressure. If you use too much pressure, you cause compression um, of the vein, you don't see it. Um, but you've got to apply just enough pressure when you're scanning around a narrow part of the body to ensure you've got a decent probe contact. But what I want to emphasize is just how far posterior around the ankle I've had to get to get that short saphenous. Now I'm gonna stop with the probe there. When would I block the sural nerve? Well, I block the sural nerve when I'm, I'm sure I'm operating on the lateral aspect of the foot, the small toe, anything on the fifth metatarsal, or if I'm doing a wake foot and ankle surgery because contact with metal or retractors or sometimes they put holding stitches over here, if you don't block this area, the patient will feel it. Uh, but that's everything in a nutshell. Uh, and that should take probably about five minutes maximum to do. You probably need to leave it about 10 minutes or so to cook. And the best way of checking effectiveness is by checking sensation on the sole of the foot. Uh, and that tells you that's the medial lateral plantar nerves and the calcaneal nerves that come from the tibial. If they don't feel pressure or sensation of the sole of the foot, you know that your tibial nerve is blocked.